all, welcome back. My name is Eddie. I'm the founder of EJH Conflict Management and I'm a conflict mediator, trainer, and facilitator based in Montreal. Uh, and today I wanted to talk about a question that I get asked often when it comes to actually trying to engage in dialogue with people uh, when a conflict is present. And the question that I often get is, how do you deal with someone who gets very activated very easily in conflict? Um, and, you know, kind of each time you try to engage with this person, they get really, really activated and upset. Um, and when we say activation, you know, we mean kind of beyond a level of stress that is manageable and conducive to dialogue. So somebody kind of, you know, this looks different for different people, but just a few examples. Um, somebody breaking down, shutting down crying uh, but really I would say the the biggest thing that activation causes is to not really be able to see beyond ourselves we we struggle to kind of be able to take on new information engage in self-reflection uh, we might get argumentative we might get defensive behaviors like that um, and they can really kind of stop us from working towards resolution so how do you engage with somebody who is consistently becoming activated every time you try to have a dialogue. So um, the first thing that I would say is to take a look at um, what I call the intentionality revolution, which is the cycle of steps that I work with my clients on developing to be able to engage in conflict from a place that is um, intentional as opposed to reactive and it has five different steps the first one being the self-reflection piece which is to do a, an assessment uh, both a self-assessment and an external assessment so when people kind of come to me about somebody who's being really reactive all the time the first thing that I kind of want to look at is like well, why is this happening for them? Why are they constantly in this place? Um, does it have anything to do with the environment that they are in and that we are creating for them? Culture and the dynamics. Is it a safe space for this person, right? There's um, areas where we get defensive because things are really hard for us personally and and we need to build up our own resiliency. But then there's also, you know, a culture and a dynamic that is created so that a person just cannot have resiliency. They don't have safety, whether it's physical safety, uh, emotional or psychological safety. So if any of those dynamics are present, uh, then obviously it makes sense why that person is moving into a triggered state so easily. So um, always that being kind of my first step in making sure that we actually create a space that is safe for that person to have resiliency in. My work always really focuses on what you can do as opposed to what somebody else can do. So if you do an assessment and you know, you talk to the person about the culture and the dynamics and they don't really have an issue with it, then we know that it's, you know, something that they need to build and work on in terms of developing their own resiliency. Uh, but also sometimes we need to develop our own resiliency as well. Um, people are allowed to be upset and sometimes we're very uncomfortable with people being upset, with people showing emotion, uh, and we sometimes need to allow for that space to happen. Most conflict doesn't always resolve itself in one go, so we might need to have multiple conversations with someone, but what we can do during those conversations is model certain behaviors that demonstrate safety uh, and inclusion for that person. And when people see that behavior modeled, over time they kind of begin to be able to self-regulate and be able to actually develop a higher level of skill and ability to remain present and intentional in the conversation instead of getting really reactive. So that's kind of my first answer to this piece of the question. There's also when you're having um, a conversation with somebody who gets triggered really easily, kind of creating conditions that are safer for that person and allow for more resiliency. So when I talk about modeling, I talk about, you know, for example, modeling patience, modeling compassion, modeling empathy, modeling proper listening techniques, um, 
and things like you know modeling validation uh, really really helps and then there's also you know allowing that person to have multiple opportunities to work through something as opposed to expecting them to work through it in one shot uh, right just one conversation knowing that you know we're going to do this in like small more digestible steps as opposed to demanding that somebody have you know a multiple hour long conversation with you when that's really not something that they're ready to do sometimes we need to meet people at where they're at and at their own pace and not expect them to operate on our pace and on our level necessarily. When we model these types of behaviors, like I said, it allows that person to feel like they're being given the space to kind of move at their own pace, process at their own pace, and that over time helps build resiliency. It really does. And it helps widen somebody's tolerance and see conflict as not something that's necessarily traumatizing or scary or dangerous but as something that could be safe and welcoming and an opportunity for learning and growth and deepening of relationship which is essentially what we want to be happening so really that's how I would say to approach a situation like that Obviously, there's going to be exceptions to that rule. Uh, Sometimes there's going to be people that it's just not going to be possible with. Um, And that could be because, like I said, your culture and dynamics are actually what need fixing first before that resiliency can be built. Uh, But also sometimes people need to work on their own um, resiliency in other ways. So if somebody has no ability to self-reflect, has no ability to do any type of self-assessment, can't offer any compassion, can't offer any empathy, they need to work on that. And sometimes that's not going to be on you to solve and you don't need to feel guilty for that. So sometimes somebody is, you're going to need to step away and let somebody do that internal work. And that might mean, you know, having to pause a relationship, change the way a relationship looks, or even ending a relationship with that person until they're able to do those things. So I hope that was a helpful answer to a very, very common question that I get. And of course, feel free to leave any questions or inquiries uh, in the comments and like this video uh, and subscribe to my channel if you want to be able to learn more and hear more about what I do. Thank you.